a very good morning to everyone good morning to everyone who is present here on behalf of clean india i am taking this pleasure mind to welcome you all for today's webinar along with me i have mr vishal who will be the speaker for the day and one of my colleagues mr anish tripathi so as you know the topic for today's webinar is scope of clinical research and what are the different career avenues for a candidate like you so here we will try to understand what is clinical research why this industry is so important in today's lives and what are the different career prospects for you so yeah i really hope it will be of much help and post the presentation we will keep one q and a round where we will take your questions also to tell you that if in between you get this join you can see an option of reconnect on your screen thank you moving on now we are hosting this webinar in association with the oxford college of pharmacy we have dr padma with us who is the principal of the college a great welcome to you ma'am your presence is really appreciated before we start would you like to say a few words yeah definitely uh, good morning to all the participants and uh, i would like to give a brief uh, detail about my organization uh, the college was started in the year 1992 and we are affiliated to pci aict and uh, we are approved from the government of uh, karnataka and we have been accredited with the nac uh, with b plus in second cycle and we have uh, recognized under 12b in ugc with ugc and we have state of art facility we have excellent uh, library books around uh, 14 to 15000 books we have with a good quality books for the students we are offering m farm d farm farm d and farm d post baccalaureate in b farm and m farm we give in pharmacognosy pharmaceutics and pharmacology specialization and uh, today we have organized this webinar in association with clini india which is an india's leading clinical research institute clini india provides training and placement in clinical research and healthcare domain it has got good great reputation in clinical research industry through its training and placement process and many of this clini india alumni are working in renowned mncs clini india has been awarded as its best training and placement to pharma life science and medical student now today's uh, the speaker mr vishal will be introduced by ms sapna and he has got a very good uh, experience and research activity in the clinical field and he has got more than 10 years and we hope uh, this uh, webinar will be useful for you and uh, this webinar is being hosted with the uh, help of uh, clini india only and uh, hope this uh, scope of clinical research and associated to mind makes your mind active and you may open a career in your uh, clinical research and uh, i appreciate that you try to learn as much as possible and uh, we will take the question at the end anyhow thank you for listening let us start the uh, topic uh, by introducing uh, mr vishal thank you thank you ma'am thank you for just such a lovely introduction as you briefed uh, the speaker we have is dr vishal vishal vidyasthi without holding up much i would now request mr vishal to start up with the session hi good morning everybody uh thank you sapna for having the introduction and starting the webinar in a very good way and uh, uh thank you dr padma ma'am for having the very nice words okay uh the today's topic uh, thanks for every joining over here okay uh, let me confirm with my voice and my presentation is clear to uh, all of you uh, is it visible yes, or not yeah you can proceed right 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 so uh, thank you very much for all the attendees over here and uh, the today's topic that we choose to uh, for the webinar is a scope of clinical research and associated domain uh, the reason behind to choose this topic of uh, scope of clinical research and associated domain because at this point of a time we understand most of the b pharma candidate life science pharma medical background candidates are comp after completion of their graduation and post graduation are planning to start their career into uh, clinical research and multiple domains okay uh, it's very important at this point of a time to discuss about the clinical research discuss about the associated domain 
discuss about the different career avenues are available, industries, market, because it's, it's a booming industry right now and uh, lots of candidates are looking to start their career. However, it's an emerging field and that's the reason it's very important to discuss today over here uh, with the help of webinar to understand the each and every concept about it. I'm going to take very crisp web, uh, webinar over here, uh, point to point, no more, no less uh, over here and you will understand that what exactly the things are. Moving ahead, right, so this uh, entire webinar, this entire presentation content is belongs to me only, okay, it, it totally belongs to my experience over here. Uh, none of the organization, employees or anybody is involved into it, right. So starting with the webinar, first the term we need to understand what the clinical research. I hope you all the people heard this term and know about uh, something about the clinical research. Now, when we talk about the clinical research, we basically need to understand that where the clinical research process uh, process exists. You all the people know about the drug discovery. So, when we talk about the drug discovery part, we are finding out the drug from the different drug resources. If we give the example, we have a multiple drug resources available. We have a plant resource, we have an animal resource, we have a marine synthetic, multiple resources are available. And we are finding out the drug from this all the resources, we are moving ahead with the step by step by doing the analytical work, finding out the molecular structure and entire details about this drug. Then we are going for in vitro, in vivo trial. Then we are moving ahead with the preclinical trial where we are finding out the safety and effectiveness of the drug on a animal first. And when we come to the conclusion that yes, the drug is safe and efficacious on animal, then we are doing the clinical trials on a human beings. Now, when we talk about the clinical research, the clinical research is part plays over here. It's one of the part of a drug discovery. However, the drug discovery process is so huge. And normally, if you talk, any organization is involved into a drug discovery process. Okay. It takes them 14 to 15 years to start a drug discovery process and the drug will complete that entire phases and the taste what comes under the drug discovery part and then come into the market. It takes a 14 to 15 years. In between the clinical research is plays a very important role where we are actually performing some tests, some trials on the human population. And when we need to understand which are the objectives are there to perform the clinical research. Means, let's take an example. If anybody asks you that, yes, there are the clinical research, but when we can perform the clinical research or clinical trials, then the basically answer should be like, first thing in a clinical research is that we are performing a clinical research to find out the safety and effic uh, effectiveness that we call the efficacy, safety and efficacy. That two words are majorly plays a very important role. After that, when the drug is safe and efficacious, then we are taking into consideration the different parameters like the quality, how we can design this and different things. But the safety and efficacy is a major thing. Now, when we talk about the safety and efficacy, we are performing the clinical research to find out the safety and efficacy of all these medications all the devices, diagnostic product, and the treatment regime intended for the human use. Okay, so whatever we are going to use on a human, we have to first find out the safety and efficacy of that product, and then and then we can use this product. Now, what are the objectives? Means when we can think about the clinical research. If you talk about the healthcare industry, it's every time it's not possible to think only for the clinical research. There are the multiple studies are also available. But basically, there are certain things where you have to perform the clinical research. So, for the assessment of a new drug, we have to go for a clinical research. When we talk about new drug, as I just given an example to you about the drug discovery. New drug, it simply means that a new chemical entity. When from any drug, res uh, uh, any resources, when we are getting a drug and we have to establish this new drug into the market, we have to perform the clinical trial. Until unless we not prove that the new existing drug or new available drug is a safe and efficacious on human population, we are not using, we are not marketing the product or this drug and we are not making it available for the uh, human population or the society. But if you understand the entire new drug discovery process or finding out the new drug is very tricky process, very time consuming process and what the best option we have to in spite of going for the new drug that what we can do, whatever the existing drugs we have available, which is already established into the market, which we already the healthcare industry know about this drug. Okay, what we can do, 
we are taking that drug and we are finding out that whether this already existing drug can be used for the multiple purpose or any another indication or any another symptom so initially we try to find out this option that whatever the available resources we have or available drugs we have we start to use it for the multiple indications or multiple symptoms but end of the day when we find out that the existing drug is not useful for any particular condition or symptom then there is a necessity to find out a new drug in both Okay, we are giving the example of vaccine. So like a drug, like a medical devices, like any another route of administration, when we talk about the vaccine, if you want to establish a new vaccine or use of a vaccine, we have to first conduct a clinical research to find out the safety and efficacy of this vaccine. Right? And the next point is that new surgical process. See, every everything we could not cure or treat by giving the vaccines or any treatment, sometimes there is a situation where we have to go for a surgical procedure okay there are lots of surgeries are available for multiple purposes so when it comes to the new surgical process okay because every year every time the new surgical process are coming into the market new updates are coming into the market new technologies to uh, do the surgeries are coming into the market but it's not directly uh, we launch into the market before that we perform the clinical trials we tested this surgical process on multiple subjects and then we understand that okay this surgical process would be a best because during this process we understand what are the loopholes are there okay where we are lacking somewhere what to update and by on the on, on this taking this on the conclusions and all we are coming with the best surgical new process so when it comes to the new surgical process as well we have to perform the clinical research right so if anybody ask you what are the objectives and when you have to perform the clinical research basically your answer should be this moving ahead now we will talk about the types of clinical research it's very interesting okay uh, you are a b pharma candidate life science doctor background candidate okay you already gone through the uh, lots of a subject which is related to the pharmacology zootics or maybe life science the the different subjects are there okay and anybody of you is interested to work into clinical research you will understand that it's very interesting field okay there is 
lots of things are very challenging and very innovative things are there and you are being a part of it okay so i'm i'm discussing this because the types of a clinical research okay what are the types of clinical research there is a multiple types of clinical research are there and to discuss this slide is very important because most of the candidate get confused between the phases of clinical research the clinical trials and the types of a clinical research sometime if any interviewer or any time if anybody ask you that what are the types of a clinical research few candidates by mistakenly give the answer of phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 phase 4 so these are not the types of a clinical research these are the phases of a clinical research however when we talk about the types of a clinical research the type of clinical research is depend on what is your objective behind to perform any clinical research now let's take an example that if your objective to perform the clinical research is that to find out any history behind any indication or any disease if you if you are looking to find out the natural history of any indication symptom or any disease that every clinical trial come under the natural history studies like a covid 19 when any patients visit to any hospital and any doctor or any staff of the hospital understand that this this xyz person is suffered from a covid 19 they are finding out the natural history of it okay they already know the covid 19 natural history but at the same time if the patient is get suffered okay they also asking some questions to them that what is the past 15 to 14 days history where 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 he was what was his lifestyle and why they are trying to find out the reason why this patient or this person is get suffered from covid 19 so we are currently we are doing a lots of a clinical trials where we are finding out the natural history of any diseases okay almost for all the treatments for all the indications we have a multiple histories as well if any person get suffer from the diabetes we need to find out that what is the natural history about it okay it, it, it is it a genetic or is it because of is the person's lifestyle and all the things so we are finding out in a natural history study and it is very important until we don't know the history we may could not come to the conclusion that what the right treatment we have to recommend to the patient understand the next point is that preventional trial let's assume that if you are performing a clinical research by keeping an objective to prevent any indication any symptom any disease and you are finding out the solution to prevention of any particular symptom or indication or any disease that every trial comes under the preventional trial at this moment we are finding out a vaccine to prevent the covid 19 we can say that this clinical trials are come under the preventional trial right next process is that diagnostic trials diagnostic trial you can simply imagine that what would be the diagnostic trial now if your objective is to find out a particular solution or best option to diagnose a disease to diagnose a indication to diagnose a symptom or signs that everything comes under the diagnostic trial all your pathological test your diagnostic tool with by which by by using this tools and this procedures if you are diagnosing something that everything comes under the diagnostic trial globally huge number of diagnostic trials are going on because now the problem over here is that most of the disease and some indications or some symptoms could not get cured because of they are not early diagnosed and it's very important for us to find out the such kind of a tool where we can do the early diagnosis and the right diagnosis of any it disease and then we can treat them i hope you are agree with my point now coming to the next point support you care trial every time when the uh, uh, the any doctor is giving a treatment to anybody okay so along with your prescription and along with your medicine doctor is always giving you some advices related to your uh, lifestyle okay if you are suffer from any uh, fever or any symptom doctor will check that doctor will diagnose these things doctor will give a uh, uh, medications to uh, to you and doctor will say that in your daily life you have to do certain changes means you you have to take a such kind of food you don't eat that you take a particular time of rest do the exercises okay support you care trial is play, plays very important role in a treatment okay research says that if you are taking a medication or a, uh, any any um, vaccines or any treatment for any disease the medications the drug is only playing the part of a 40 person if the patient get cured Now, what the remaining sixty percent part will play? The remaining sixty percent part is played by the psychology of the patient and what the supportive care he takes during the treatment. And that's the reason for particular when we are discovering any treatment or we are uh, 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 finding out any treatment, 
along with the drug and all the things we also find out that what the supportive care we we have to recommend to the patient so the patient will get cured right next is observational trial observational trials are the lengthy trials it may run for 2 years 5 years 10 years 15 years and so on in observation trials we are taking the particular population with the habits or with any particular uh, means i could must say the particular indication we can take that people and we are observing them for the 5 years 10 years or next 15 years to find out that what are their habits are impacted on their body system or any particular reason is that so if you are keeping the people on the observation that everything comes under the observational trial right i hope you are uh, uh, get this point right so the most important part and the most important slide over here okay we just understand about the uh, uh, the objectives of a clinical research we just understand about that uh, the types of a clinical research and now we will we will we will understand that why the india is becoming a favorite destination for the clinical research okay it's very important interesting because the thing is that we are the indian peoples and uh, at the same time we are pursue our education and probably we will start our career in indian companies as well okay and as far as the india is concerned you know that in india uh, lots of uh, clinical trials are going on every time you are coming with the news and also you are coming with the job opportunities as well you understand that there is a lots of a career opportunities into india because of there are some certain factors because for the clinical research india is become a favorite destination and why the india is become a favorite destination because this 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 factors are associated with it okay i, I would like to give an example to you might be if you want to go for a shopping purpose or uh, if if you think to go for shopping might be there are some shopping malls or few destinations are there where you would like to go for the shopping there is a multiple multiple things are available means you are going on that location or this certain uh, mall is a fav uh, favorite mall for you because you are getting everything available at one location the secondary thing is that multiple varieties are available and the third most important thing is that you are getting it available in a, a flexible rates as well the price and all the things maybe you are getting some sales and all so that's the reason you this this destinations or shopping malls become a favorite destination for you go for the shopping same with the india has that okay why the india is becoming a favorite destination for all the pharmaceutical companies multinational contract research organizations and outside the countries to conduct the clinical research in india because the first factor is that it is is diversity see india is known for the highest population but unfortunately india is also known for the uh, disease population as well okay in india you will get the population who suffer from the multiple diseases and any clinical trial you want to do it may be of a acute clinical trial or it may be of a uh, chronic clinical trial okay you will get all the patients available in india and to make a successful clinical trial okay you require the patients so in that case when you require the patients okay and at uh, any location uh, uh, you are getting this all the patients are available you any pharmaceutical company or any contract research organization can run the clinical trial very smoothly okay and complete the clinical trial on time because it's very necessary to complete the clinical trial on time so uh, next point is that the trained manpower okay when we talk about the trained manpower whatever the trained manpower required to uh, perform the clinical research and clinical research services okay we are getting trained manpower easily available okay in india that's the most important thing because until unless we don't have a trained manpower how we can run the process okay and in india we have all the educated people all the professionals available and all technically skilled people available and that's the reason that's a second factor third factor is that wide range of a contract research organization i hope you uh, heard this concept the contract research organization okay globally currently the contract research organization is is a very booming industry because this is the organizations who is performing the end to end services of a clinical research they can perform in the clinical trials they can manage the data as well they can do the pharmacological services provide they can also involve into the publications as well okay so every pharmaceutical because all the setup manpower they have the uh, capacity to perform the clinical trials everything they have available and that's the reason if any institution any sponsor or any pharmaceutical company who want to perform the clinical trial they are outsourcing this work to contract research organization the next point is that a state of or a state of art hospitals 
we require the patient to perform the clinical trial and where we will get the patients we will get the patients into hospitals as well uh, hospitals only also that to perform a clinical trial we require the doctors and where we will get that it will get in hospitals as well and to perform the clinical trial we require the facilities and the preparation ready where we will get we will get in hospitals as well so basically hospital is a site or the location where we are performing the clinical trials and for this reason we in india we have a multi chain multi specialty hospitals are available where we can perform the clinical trial and easily we will get the this facility available that's the next factor the next factor is that state of it structure as per us in for uh, uh, information technology is concerned in our daily to daily routine we are using and we are uh, uh, i must say the used to with the information technology okay and same thing happens into a clinical research and any another industry if and if you can take any industry the information technology plays a very role a very important role and the same thing into a clinical research and associated domain when we talk about the clinical research and associated domain we require the systems we require the softwares and we require the information technology support in india we have a booming it industry big and it companies are available who can provide the solution on time and very accurate solution that can provide so we have it structure available itself in india we don't have to outsource it right the next point is everything will get available in to a lower cost okay every time the cost matters whenever we spend something we always think that yes the time the the cost uh, for the uh, the task that we are performing or we are doing any particular work the cost should be less and everything that available in india which available into a very lower cost the next most important point the bulk drug formulation you all people know that india is known for the highest pharmaceutical manufacturing industry okay we are manufacturing the active pharmaceutical ingredients we are manufacturing the bulk drug we are manufacturing the formulations and that everything get available all here okay and that's the reason it's a, again a major factor and apart from this all the uh, factors i would like to tell you some interesting factors about the india why india is becoming a favorite destination because in a india we have multiple regions are available with the multiple regions we have a multiple climatic conditions are available with the climatic condition we have different cultures available with food habits and everything and along with that india has a multiple population races are there so it simply says that if your drug is showing the safety and efficacy in indian population okay then this drug will show the safety and efficacy to the all the countries as well in the different countries as well and that is the most important factor that india is becoming a favorite destination to perform the clinical research okay i hope you understand this point moving ahead now we will talk about uh, the main objectives of this webinar okay we are going to discuss about the clinical research and the clinical clinical research and this associated domain okay and i'm going to discuss with you that how this domain are interlinked with each other so we will talk about the first domain that's a clinical trial management the clinical trial management is a very basic and important domain it's it's very uh, primary domain what we are doing into a clinical trial management as i only discussed that we are performing a phase 0 phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 at phases we are performing the actual trials we are performing we are uh, testing a investigational drug that uh, that drug which we wanted to perform the clinical trial we are using it on a actual human patients and we are finding out that whether this drug will showing the safety and efficacy on the patient or not and whether we are this this drug can cure this in particular indication of patients or not so we are performing the actual clinical trial and that's why we call it a clinical trial management in this process you will understand the documentation process in this process you will understand that how to design the clinical trials how to perform the clinical trials how to find out the anticipated result how to do the calculations ethics committees there is a lots of things are there and if anybody of you would like to start your career into a clinical trial management okay you can start your career as a crc or cra it means clinical research coordinator or clinical research associate you might be heard this term earlier or if not when you start to prepare to uh, prepare to give the interviews for clinical trial management you may come across with this profile with starting the profile like a crc and cra after taking the good experience into the market you can reach to the profile till the project manager as well and it's very possible because at this moment in this domain there is no saturation candidate with the qualification background with having the good technical skills can easily enter into the industry and by taking the good experience into the industry can achieve the milestone what they have in a 3 to 5 years 
Okay. Now, when we talk about the clinical trial management, which is the one of the part of a drug discovery, if you talk to perform this all the phase zero, phase one, phase three, phase four trials, this all the phases itself takes a four to five average years to complete the entire phases in a clinical trials. So during these four to five years, I'm talking average four to five years. It depends on the complexity of a clinical trials and what exactly your design of a clinical trial is. Based on that, it takes a four to five years to complete the entire phases. When you just imagine that into four to five years, when we are performing the clinical trial and we're recording everything in the documents or we are making a data ready for the clinical trials, how much data is generated in four to five years? There is huge data is generated during this four to five years when you are performing the clinical trials. The data would be regarding the patient. The data would be regarding of uh, uh, the ethics committee, every particular site, every single reading, every single observation, that every data is generated. Now it's very difficult for us to manage this data. And for this reason, we require some system, we require some software, we require some management process where we can record this data and where we can manipulate, uh, means we can uh, the, uh, that, uh, manage this entire data. And for this reason, we have a next domain that's a clinical data management. In a clinical data management, we are entering this data into a particular system. We are doing the statistical evaluation of this data. We are analyzing this data and by this data, by doing the statistical analysis and doing the uh, assessment of this data, we come to the conclusion whether we are getting the anticipated result from the clinical trial that we are performing on. Okay, it's definitely, means even in a lab, if you're doing a practical, you're making a record of it. You're doing the, you're finding out the readings of it and then you come to conclusion that, okay, your practical is successful or not. The same thing we are doing into a clinical trials as well. We are finding out the huge data. Why we are doing, why we are using the clinical data management process? Because we're doing this, all the process in clinical data management, entering this data, doing the statistical evaluation, assessment of readings and all that. Because we have to make our documentation in accurate and credible form. These two terms are very important, the accurate and the credible documents or the data. Why? Because when you claim to any ethics committee or anybody that you performed your clinical trial according with the good clinical practices guidelines, GCP, good clinical practices guidelines. Okay, like you know GMP, good manufacturing practices. These are the guidelines if you wanted to manufacture any product. The same way, good clinical practices, GCP guidelines, is, is the guidelines to if you want to conduct a clinical trial. So you can only say that you perform the clinical trial accordingly with the following the principle of GCP when you show that your data is accurate and credible. Right? And to make this data accurate and credible, you require a clinical data management process. Right? I hope you understand this point. Now, anybody of you, it's a booming industry. Again, if you are interested to start your career as a clinical data uh, in a clinical data management, you can. Most of the uh, companies are giving a profile like a data analyst or data specialist. Some of the companies are giving the profile initial, freshest level profile as a data process associate. You can start with this profile, and after having the good experience into the industry, you can reach to the profile, deal with the project manager. Okay, and it's very much possible, right? So we understand the two process, the clinical trial management, where we perform the actual clinical trials and the whatever data is generated during the clinical trial, we manage it into a clinical data management. Now, the very interesting point is that when we are performing this all the clinical trial and whatever the patients we are taking during the clinical trial, okay, this all the patients are chosen by us. We decided the inclusion extreme criteria and that every patient is under control of a clinical trial. But now the problem starts when we successfully complete this all clinical trial and when the drug come into the market and when all the population start to use this, it becomes very difficult for us to do the assessment of any adverse reaction, serious adverse reaction, any suspected, unexpected, serious adverse reaction, any adverse event which is happening into the market to the population who is consuming this product. You can understand it. How it, how it is possible? It means my drug is in the market. How I can understand that how many patients are... Uh, purchase my product today and consume the drug and how big, how I can confirm that this drug is really proving the safety and efficacy. It might be possible that there is some adverse reaction happen with some patient and it is reported somewhere into the corner of India or a country. For this reason, I have to keep the watch on that activities as well. Why it is important? Because might be you heard some news earlier that few 
drugs or few formulations are banned from any particular country or particular region okay why it is happen because we are doing this assessment we are monitoring the drugs activity into particular region and the monitoring okay here i am talking about the pharmacovigilance process the pharmacovigilance department collecting a drug uh, collecting a data from the market re uh, regarding any particular drug or any particular formulation doing the detection of any adverse effect or any effect any side effect is happen by this drug in to the population doing the assessment means finding out the reason that what was the reason that the any adverse reaction or any adverse event is happen monitoring keep the monitoring on the, the uh, if any more cases are there and find out the preventions for the adverse effect of any pharmaceutical product now imagine that every pharmaceutical company who is manufacturing their product and their product is in still into the market this all the pharmaceutical companies has to give the safety reports about their product or their drug to the ethics committee or to the government and they have to claim at every time that their drug is still showing the good safety and efficacy results into a market and that's the reason the pharmacovigilance report is more important because pharmacovigilance makes you report available the periodic safety update report and drug safety update reports that they are providing you by which you will understand whether your drug is really showing the good effect on the market or not i discussed the term ban why the product get ban and why it is necessary the problem is that let's assume that you conducted a clinical trial on xyz drug currently and you used into the current population with looking to the entire lifestyle the climatic conditions and the current population is concerned your drug is showing the best results on the current population but after 10 to 20 years because the the nature is changing the entire things is changing after 10 to 20 year might be if the climatic conditions were changed if the lifestyle is changed if the natural things are changed and if your body acquired these changes okay then it's perfectly fine but drug which you discovered today could not acquire that changes and that's the reason the pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic you might be know this results okay that time after 20 years the current drug could not show the safety and efficacy on that that time what your body is acquired and for this reason we have a two options so the pharmaceutical company has a two options either they can change the molecule or either they can ban the molecule now when we talk about the changing the molecule we have to make a generation of this product we have to make a generation of this product accordingly with the population or the ages are coming further example you know the cephalosporin the cephalosporin has a multiple generations available in the current situation in current population if you're using the cephalosporin first generation probably it will not show that much of a safety and efficacy it will definitely show the good results but not up to that mark right now we have a, a, the latest generation of a cephalosporin and which we are normally recommending to the population and now this generation of cephalosporin is showing the best results on a population so if we if, we, if it is a possible to change the molecular structure and make a generation of a product then it's possible if not then we have to ban the product and who will how we can come to know about this by the pharmacovigilance process the pharmacovigilance department work on it right if anybody of you i know that most of the pharma life science pharm the medical background candidates are dreaming to start their career into a pharmacovigilance because of kind of a salary kind of a companies are hiring them the work culture is available into the pharmacovigilance and that's the reason if you are ready to start your career into a pharmacovigilance process you can start your career as a pharmacovigilance scientist or you can start your career as a drug safety associate multiple profiles are available into a market and by taking good experience into the industry you can reach to the profile till the project manager or a medical director level right now that was the three domains was very interesting you have performed the clinical trials you managed the data you also keeping the watch on the activity of your drug into the market but how you can communicate it to the population how you can communicate it to the healthcare industry how you can communicate to the doctors healthcare professionals society chemists patients how you can communicate this you have a huge number of data you have lots of documents how you can show that that what you done what you doing what are the result of it for this reason if you talk about that if you need some medical communications ready we have a department that's medical writing medical writing team or the medical writers are the people are the professionals who are designing a scientific ready content or medical related content for your product for your research now let's assume that whatever the scientific thing medical related things the stuff any article any content any blog you are reading that is designed majorly by the medical writer
okay and it's a huge responsibility on a medical writer to design the right content because whatever they're going to write it will be followed by the society and for this reason you have a good skill of medical writing good knowledge about the industry good knowledge is about the disease drug everything you should have a good knowledge because the salary is also good into a medical writer profession professional and being a life science pharma and doctor background candidate you can definitely enter into the medical writing right so if you are anybody is interested to start your career in a medical writing okay you can start your career as a medical writer scientific writer content writer editorial associate or senior editor by taking good experience you can reach to that profiles as well right so it is a medical writing part now i am coming to the most interesting slide that's a employers okay at this point of a time you might be 30 to 40 or 50% 50% decided that okay the clinical research is very good industry but after knowing the employers you might be fixed that okay you would like to enter into a clinical research industry how because not only restricted or limited only to the pharmaceutical and the biotech industry you have a multiple career opportunities to work into the it healthcare sector because of most of the it companies are uh recruiting uh, the life science pharma doctors candidate for their healthcare process contract research organization is the most booming industry worldwide having the active operations in india the companies like sinos health iqia ppd paraxel coans okay might be heard this company's name it companies like accenture scaphomix tcs cogizon these are it healthcare companies who is recruiting huge number Yes, are majorly used into a clinical research uh, industry. Okay, so if anybody asks you that what are the industries are available over there, uh, softwares are available over there. Okay, you can basically use these softwares, right? So I hope I am able to clear you all this point and you understand it very well. Okay, in that case, if you have any kind of a questions, okay, my my uh, presentation is over. Okay, and uh, I. believe that if you have any kind of a questions you can ask me which is related to the clinical research anything related to the clinical research or any another industry i will try to give the satisfied answer to you thank you for the great webinar i think this was quite crisp and precise uh, for all the participants thank you so much Uh, so we are getting some of the questions now. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, I would like to clarify that we have just posted the webinar uh, certification link on the top of your chat box. Uh, so request all the participants to click on that link. Uh, post this webinar ends. Probably you can get the certification in your inbox directly after this webinar as well.
Uh, so I'm getting some of the questions in the meanwhile. Uh, Akash is asking, does M form add any advantage to get into pharmacovigilance industry? Yes, definitely. Uh, M pharma adds a lots of advantage out there. Okay. Uh, basically, I would like to mention over here that the pharmacy education has a huge requirements into a clinical research industry. Okay. That it's a very sensitive field and the mistakes are uh, or the errors from uh, when you're while you're working into the industry are it should be very less as far as the pharmacovigilance is concerned okay you should have the all the good understanding about the pharmacology all the good understanding about the drug diseases how it performs the mechanism of it okay and uh, how the process actually works what are the different documentations we can uh, generate and normally the expectations are there okay uh, how to collect the data how to do the assessment that everything is required okay so basically uh, just to find out this knowledge from the internet would become sometimes very difficult okay have the good communication skill writing skill analysis skill it should require so for this reason the most of the candidates are uh, basically prefer to go for the certification program where they will get technically trained on a to z about the pharmacovigilance and to understand the pharmacovigilance you basically need to understand about the clinical trial process data process as well so if you have an understanding of all this domain which i discussed during my webinar okay you can successfully start your career into a pharmacovigilance process right thank you vishal uh, we've got one more question from neeraj mohanty uh, neeraj want to know that what exactly is medical writing uh, importance in clinical research domain what exactly importance of medical writing in clinical mm -hmm. research right uh, medical writing plays a very important role here okay why because uh, if you if you think to start a clinical trial and hypothetically you design that okay you have everything is ready and now you want to start a clinical trial to start a clinical trial you require a lots of a documentations preparations already ready however before starting the clinical trial or to take the approval of the clinical trial you have to submit this the dummy copies and the, the copies of all the documentations which are required to start the clinical trial to the ethics committee it means the dcj the dcj first cross verify this all the documentations and the process that you design for the clinical trial it contains a lot lots of documents like a protocol case report form informed consent form investigation brochure this is a list of essential documents if you can download the ICA GCP E6 R2 guideline PDF copy from the internet, you will understand there is a lots of list of documents are there. Now it would require some population or require some team that who can design this document. Okay, let's take an example. If you are reading a newspaper and there is an article out there. Okay, so when we talk about the article, you are the person who who choose a topic and you have some content. Okay, and you want to give in a newspaper. So when you give that content to the newspaper, okay, you are just given a content or thought process or hypothesis of your. But there are some particular people who know how to write the article, who know how to write the news. And for this reason, when you give some inputs, when you give some content to them, okay, there are the people who are writing this content. Same thing happens into a medical writing. Okay, there are the medical expert teams, the doctors, professionals are there who gives the concept and who gives the content that this is the content and we have to write this. how to write these things how to find out stuff how to do the literature survey and what will be the writing over there it depends on the medical writer so all these documents are generated by the medical writer medical writer knows that how to exactly generate the documents and draft the documents and write the documents and it's not only about during the starting of a clinical trial in every stage when it comes to the drafting or designing any document okay the medical writing plays a very medical writing team plays a very important role even after completion of your clinical trial when you have to publish a clinical trial or any report or any publish a study you require a person who technically know that how to do the writing scientific or medical writing and for this reason you require the medical writing team right so when we talk about the medical writers it has a very important and crucial role again go more if it just talk ahead every pharmaceutical company has their brand and every pharmaceutical company is promoting their brands to the doctors and the market how they are promoting the brand if they want if they want that my brand or my product should get more promoted and more recommended okay they have to pitch something they have to give some input about their product to the uh, doctors or the healthcare industry how they can do so for this reason they have to make some literature ready some uh, some lit, uh, some leaflet ready some pamphlet ready some informative content ready of their product who will design this thing 
okay any product manager of a pharmaceutical company would not design because he is the md or he has the another education so they, they required some scientific uh, 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 team or medical writing team because what happens the medical writing team as i discussed that plays a very important role because whatever you are going to draft or whatever you are going to write okay it is followed by the society and that's the reason you have to be very particular that what is you are reading or writing that would be appropriate and the precious one so i hope this answer satisfies your question here the medical writer team has that much of importance thank you vishal uh, we're getting one more question from sadashivam sadashivam want to know that any training for clinical research domain is required even after doing the farm d yeah uh, see as per as when uh, the question comes like a training and all i suggest them that training or any certification actually it's not a necessary okay if you wanted to start your career into a clinical research based on your qualification and if you can grab the knowledge okay then on this only you can apply to the companies and you can if you get the opportunity if the company call you for the interview you can give the interview and you can crack the interview and get grab the opportunity as well but however the second most important point over here is that most of the industries are asking a technically certified candidate and not only only the qualified candidates okay because they knows that the qualified candidates they will get if there is a team requirements are there and if you just they open the requirement into any nokri.com or job portal they will get the 200 to 300 resumes who are just educationally qualified okay and finding out the team candidates out of this 200 to 300 candidates to who's generated the application is very difficult what the best option they have is but of cross checking with this all this 200 and 300 resumes okay what they can do they can call to any institutions or any uh, any particular uh, uh, a uh, college or any particular uh, the person the reference person where they understand that they will get the if they require for the team candidates they will get the 15 to 20 good resumes where from this 20 to 15 resumes they can shortlist the people and the same thing is happening currently into the industry and that's the reason the certification is playing a very important role the certified candidate if the company is getting a certified candidate they are the uh, means uh, they are realized that the candidate should have a good technical knowledge even the candidate has a technical knowledge that's the reason the candidate can easily crack the interview and interview can take the easily interview so in that case on a educational basis you can raise an application but when it comes to the selection part because the technical terms should be known the knowledge should be known references should be there okay and everybody can be get settled by taking just a certification program okay and also it's to improve your uh, future prospect when you have a certification you can do it very well so for this reason you can based on qualification you can also get the placement opportunity that mm. 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 you can you please provide with a certification of a medical writing of pharmacovigilance we are not providing that because there is reason reason is that the single certification mostly the multinational companies are not accepting and we always keep the mind when the candidate is pursuing the certification he or she would get the companies which is a multinational single first party or second party companies and could get the highest package and for to understand these things candidate should be trained into each and every domain not only about the technical education candidate should have a good communication skill that should it is most important candidate should have a presentation skills that is most important required uh, should crack the aptitude as well and that's the reason that every to, to solve this every problem okay the certification is plays a very important role i come to the another point as well that that is a one of the part of a certification secondary part is that most of the time you understand the multinational global companies are not putting the freshers requirement into uh, any job portal or any uh, i could must say uh, uh, any 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 job portals like a nokri.com so what they does they are directly contacting to the institutes and asking a particular candidates particular qualified candidates with the requirement they say that we shall uh, means if anybody calls us and say that we shall be required that con- that qualified candidate with these skills with certified or not and on the basis that what we does we are shortlisting the candidate we are sending to them and they complete the recruitment process by only giving the uh, a single call to any institution the, sec- the last most important thing is that if you are not certified or if you if you are not uh, aware with the industry you probably have to find out your own references into the industry that's a practical situation okay let's assume that you are not aware with any industry you don't have any contacts into the industry you don't have a professional network available for every requirement you have to find out the reference for yourself because most of the time industry is preferring the referred candidate but 
when you are taking a certification program okay that is plays a very most important role when the industry itself is calling and asking the candidate it industry itself gives their own references to the candidate when they are coming to the interview give my references or hr itself gives the references that when you entering into the industry or a company give my references and they will enter so this entirely the transformation is there means whatever you have to struggle based on your only qualification to find out the job just pursuing the certification or just taking a good knowledge of the industry and the domain you can easily solve this all the problem even in that case you only have to only just concentrate on your certification and your uh, program only rest of the things institute plays its own part so that is a very easiest option that you if you are planning to start your career okay you can take a step ahead and you can do these things very easily and achieve your career goal thank you vishal uh, for the fantastic i am getting uh, some more questions uh, they would like to know about clean india's training and internship program so would you like to highlight something over here or maybe should i ask them to fill up the form and ask them to you know get in touch with us uh, about how to take certification program yes yes they would like to understand the clean india's training and certification program yes there definitely means uh, it's no uh, there's no problem to share over here because when we talk about the taking the certification program currently uh, the clean india is providing the very robust solution in terms of a certification program okay important part is that the clean india is providing the e learning certifications right now which is which, which is which is the most important part over here the secondary thing is that whatever the e learning certifications are there okay currently into uh, india or into a market such kind of online e learning clinical research certifications are not available you will find out that e learning certifications for engineering java c++ data science and all things are available but as far as the clinical research is concerned okay clean india itself only has the e learning certifications available with most of the benefit you can do a live virtual classes by sitting at your home by mobile or laptop second most important thing is that it's a customized program and that's the reason you are getting the all the certifications program available in a one certifications only so after taking this certification you can plan your voice career that in which domain you like to land your career because you have all the certifications so you understand that what exactly the domains are what is the roles and responsibilities should be there what the profiles are there third most important thing is that along with the virtual classes institute is providing you the lms access that's a learning management system in a learning management system you have your login id and password whenever you have a time you can enter into a lms access you can find out the recorded sessions into lms access in that case if you miss any virtual class or any uh, uh, class and on a particular day where the live trainer trainer is taking the live classes if you miss that you can enter into the lms access and you can find out the recorded sessions over there you have all the study material available over there you have all the presentations available over there so there is no required to send you the hard copy or any presentations or any ppt on your email everything you will get available into the lms access and from first day itself only we are giving you the access of a interview preparation you can do the interview preparation of a aptitude test how to crack the interviews which are the questions are going to ask ask for particular interviews what are the expectation that everything is provided online to you and during live session trainer itself are taking some surprise test to you to understand that how much you technically develop and on the basis that you can complete your certifications and you can take the placement from the institute side institute at this moment is looking the higher number of a crowd should be engaged into the certification because upcoming requirements are so huge in this lockdown period of a time in a 2 to 3 months all the recruiters the major recruiters who was who was hiring the candidates or recruiting the candidates on every month they are stop their requirement because of this lockdown they know that even they hire to the candidate candidate could not relocate to the company's relocation but if you just imagine that how many requirements are hold in a particular 2 to 3 month and when the requirement will open this lockdown will open every company will start to recruit at a one point of a time and the huge requirement will be generated and we know that already we are continuously communication with the hr technical persons have a friendly relation we discuss that what the position is there and we know that means there is there will be a huge requirement and to meet this requirement at this moment we are collecting the crowd we are enrolling a maximum fresh candidates and the pass out candidates we are asking them it's a very comfortable option you have that you can do your online certification program and you can take a placement from the institute so you don't have to do anything you have to just complete your certification and perform well over there based on your interest based on your profile based on your preferred location based on your interest institute is ready to give the placement because at this moment in industry the saturation is not there and you have a lots of good opportunities that you can after graduation and post graduation you can land your career into clinical research 
Okay, so this is the very easiest and the uh, the I could say the feasible option you have currently to go for the e-learning e certification. If anybody has any doubt that how the e-learning will happen, okay, fill the feedback form. If you require the demo sessions of how the uh, this uh, uh, the online certifications runs, I'm sending my number over here. You can call me over here, and I will give the demo that how the online certifications runs over there. Okay, and every process we we can explain over there. Thank you, Vishal. Thank you so much for your uh, kind support. I'll take a 30 seconds time more uh, to tell them what exactly is Clean India in short as well. Okay, so it's a small video presentation. Request all the participants to mute their mute their mic. Uh, in the meanwhile, Vishal, if you can share the link, uh, which is for the feedback form, because the existing link has already got the maximum number of attendance, so it is not accepting any more. Okay. Share your feedback link also. Uh, sir, I think I I just open a feedback link. And all the points are open in a feedback link. I think candidates can fill their uh, details in a feedback form. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for the confirmation. Yeah, it's so active now. Is... Yeah, it's active now. Yeah, so the yeah. feedback form, right? So the feedback link is on the top of your chat. Okay, for webinar certification, you fill this feedback form and you will get your certification participation certification after giving this information. Hey, this is John. Okay, so welcome to Clean in India. The... If you are a pharma science or medical graduate, you can build your career in clinical research. At Clean India, we create job-ready professionals to grab the first-hand requirements from leading CROs, pharma, and IT companies. Our industry-led faculty in India includes clinical operations, clinical data management, pharmacovigilance, and medical writing. In addition, our soft skills training provide an edge during the hiring procedure at multinational companies. We have been awarded for the best placements in clinical research. Our alumni is working with multiple Fortune 500 companies in India and abroad. For more details, log on to cleaningindia.com or call our learning consultant. So thank you so much. I think uh, you got what exactly we do. Uh, Clean India is India's leading institute, as I already mentioned it to you. And uh, we are right now in Bangalore, Hyderabad, Pune, and Mumbai. In Bangalore, we are in Whitefield. Uh, Prashri Shantani Ketan right now. And uh, maybe if you have any questions, I've just sent a link on your screen as well. Maybe you can fill up the forms. Our colleagues will get in touch with you and help you out with more details. Uh, so should we take up any more questions now, Vishal? Do we have time or? Yes, sir, we can take a question if there is anything. Uh, I think I think we have answered almost most of the maximum matching questions in the meanwhile. I'll request Dr. Parth Sarthi now uh, to unmute his mic and uh, conclude this session uh, so that we can move towards the conclusion of this today's event. Yes, sir. Very good morning, all of you. It is a very interesting session. Uh, thanks for, uh, for Dr. Special thanks to Dr. Vishal and uh, the team, Clean India, Madam Sapna and everyone. It is a pleasure to deliver a vote of thanks at this end as a HOD and organizing secretary of this webinar from the Oxford College of Pharmacy. First of all, I would like to thank our chairman, sir, Sri SNVL Narasimha Raja, sir, for guiding us, uh, our institution towards an uh, innovative visions and also uh, extreme support for the successful progress of our institution. We liked uh, this presentation very much. Actually, in this current scenario, everyone are uh, uh, looking for the opportunity towards the clinical research. Uh, Mr. Vishal has provided uh, um, many interesting informations. Our students like very much about clinical trial management, clinical data management, pharmacovigilance, medical writing, regulatory affairs. Everything are very interesting. I uh, also thank our principal madam, Dr. Padma M. Parag, for the constant encouragement and dynamic planning to make this webinar that is uh, a very successful one. I especially thank the team of Clean India and also the uh, faculty members of the Department of Pharmacy Practice in the Oxford College of Pharmacy working behind to make this event a very successful manner. I extremely thank all the uh, participants one, uh, and uh, we will meet once again with this uh, uh, platform once again with an interesting topic again. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you, Dr. Pat Sarthi. On behalf of Clean India, I would like to thank to all the participants once again, uh, to the management of Oxford College of Pharmacy, 
Dr. Padma and our principal ma'am and Dr. Parth Sarthi to you for the you know our fantastic support and the extended uh, hosting this event on entirely. So thank you so much for being a part of this event, all the participants. Request you to have a look onto the link again. It is active now. You can just fill up this form. Uh, you will get a certification in your inbox directly. Okay, as soon as you fill up the form, you'll get a certification in your inbox. All right. If not, kindly revert back to the email. We will get in touch with you and send you the next link if in case it is not working out. So with this, we'll be concluding the session for today morning. Thank you all the participants. Bye.